we created a service, we went through all that, we understand how everything generally works, but we only reserved the resources, right? We didn't initialize the service. We didn't initialize the partition as you normally would. So what I did here is I reserved the resources, and now I'm going to log in as the application owner, in this case, Jay Smith, and try to see what's available to my organization. So as I log in, I'm presented with this screen as an app owner. You can see the signing dev service has been reserved for me, but it has not been initialized yet. So all the capabilities of the backend HSM partition are there. As you can see, there is no label because it has not been initialized. Of course, there's not going to be any keys or any clients yet. And I can do this as the admin, okay? So if you don't have a separation of duties, you don't need the app owner in this case. But in a traditional crypto as a service environment, you would have a separation of duties. If I were to check out the backend HSM and do a partition show, you will see that that is signing service, but nothing has been initialized, as I said, including the label. So that's what it looks like on the back end. Very similar. I will click initialize service. And here we have the option to give it a partition label. It does not have to be the same as the service itself. Uh, maybe the admin gave it a particular name and how they organize resources internally versus what the end customer, the end user would consume it as. I will use the same name just to keep things simple. Here is where you set up the cloning domain string. If we need to clone keys around, if we're setting up HA in the future, or for backup. In this case, this is a standalone partition, so I don't care about HA right now. So I'll give it a cloning domain. And here we have the option to initialize the roles. When it says security officer, it's referring to the partition security officer, or PO not the security officer on the HSM. And the crypto officer is the partition owner that everyone's familiar with. Because this is a Luna password HSM, I'm not concerned with activation or challenges. There only is one password, okay, that we are concerned with, the crypto officer password. I will confirm that. I could optionally initialize the crypto user. I don't have to. As you can see, it'll let me complete. It's an optional role, the read-only role, a subset of PKC11 that we created. So you could use this limited user. I will, just for demo purposes. And a common question is, wait, don't you always have to change the login of the crypto officer um, after setting up those temp credentials? So this is actually uh, changing it for you. So these will be the credentials the crypto officer will use to log in to uh, the partition to actually use it to integrate with an application. So you don't need to go ahead and log in and then run a role change password for that initial login or else everything will be broken. This will take care of it. So I'll click finish. It'll pull up the device and actually perform this process for you all automatically. And that's the beauty of CCC. And for a password device, it's fairly simple process and pretty quick, as you just saw right now. You don't need to be an HSM expert or a Luna expert or anything of that nature to use this type of console, which is the whole point of CCC. Now we will see a partition with a label. We will see the capabilities are the same as before. There's still no keys or client. But if I were to check out what's happening on the HSM, we'll do partition show again. And now we see a different screen, All right, Now you see the label. You see that the partition security officer is set up. Crypto officer is set up. The pin does not need to be changed. The crypto user is even set up and the pin does not need to be changed. So everything is set up from that perspective besides deploying it to the client and starting to use that partition for your application. But that's it for a password HSM. Very simple, very automated, very streamlined.